Peace, peace, peace. Welcome back to my channel. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's your boy Vic Sling. Vic Sling. Vic Sling. <laughs> Vic Sling Hope. <laughs> um, AKA Abdul Hadi. You know. Um, and I just wanted to share some words with the people, man. I wanted to share some words, some some reflections, some Ramadan reflections that you don't have to be Muslim to benefit from the message. You know, anybody can mess um message <laughs> anybody can benefit from the messages you know so i wanted to share some some insight with you with the people real quick so in chapter 41 of the quran um verse 49 chapter 41 is fusila right it says man does not get tired of asking for good things from allah but if evil touches him then he gives up all hope and is lost in despair. Right? Now, I want to highlight this verse. I want to read a few, for a few verses, but here I want to talk about how man does not get tired of asking for good things from God, right? But if an evil touches him, then he, is, he loses hope and is in despair. You know, man is constantly chasing, constantly asking for something. Like he's constantly like, give me, give me, give me. Not just to God, but just think about your own relationships, right? Think about the people in your life. They always like, give me, give me, give me. It's rare when you have people like that come into your life willing to give you, willing to share with you, you know? And this is the nature of man, right? It's almost like, give me, give me, give me. You notice the people who are millionaires or billionaires, right? They get one billion, what do they want? They want another billion. They get one mountain of gold, they want another one. Right? There's a narration that says that if man was given a one mountain of gold, he would want another one. Right? But when is the last time that we actually sat down and said, thank you, God? Of course, this is for the ones who believe because it's, it's, it's people who don't believe. But when is the last time we actually sat down and, and, and appreciated what we have and said, thank you, Lord? You know, the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said two of the things that people squander the most and like don't appreciate is good health and free time. How many of us woke up today and say, alhamdulillah, all praises due to God because he allowed me to wake up. He allowed me to be healthy. He allowed me to be able to walk on my two feet. Some people can't walk. He allowed me to breathe on my own. Some people can't breathe on their own. They need a machine. He allowed me to feed myself. Some people can't feed themselves. They need to be fed by somebody. Right? This is a blessing just to be healthy. It's a blessing just to have time to be able to do certain things. Right? Um, he said, but if evil touches him, then he gives up all hope and loss and is lost in despair. Some of us, because we don't get what we want, right? Or because we have some hardships that God might test us with. Maybe a little poverty, maybe a little sickness. Um, like Prophet Job was tested, right? And all he did was it, it fortified his faith. So some of us, when we don't get things that we want, when things don't go our way, we lost in despair, right? Some of us even tend to talk trash about God. Some people don't believe in God only because, like I don't ran into people who say, why should I believe in God when there's babies starving in the world? Why should I believe in God because there's cancer? Why should I believe in God? Like, they have all of these reasons, right? But then on the other hand, we could talk about so many other benefits. And then we could also get into the reason why some of these things are happening is because of the hands of man, not because of God. And a lot of times, God allows those people to continue to do those things that are harmful to other people so that he can punish them later on for the things they have done for the things that they have caused okay so there, there's there's always a reason for something even though you might not see it or understand it there's always a method right and then in the next verse it says and truly if we give him a taste of mercy from us after some adversity right has touched him he is surely to say this is due to my merit and, and I think now that the hour will be established. So sometimes even when God grants people relief from disease, relief from some type of hardship, relief from poverty, they, they become arrogant. They, they start to like, 
yeah, man, you know, I got it out the mud, man. I, I, I'm here because of me. How many times we hear people say that? That's why I don't even like that slogan. They said, I got it out the mud. I did it on my own. When that is so far from the truth. The world works through socialization. We all benefit from somebody in some way. You get what I'm saying? Somebody connect us to somebody. You know, we might have to pay somebody to do certain things for us. It's socialization. You didn't do it of your own. Nothing is of your own, right? Um, and then they start to become arrogant because they're getting good things in this life. And then they start to say, well, I don't think we'll be resurrected. I don't think God is going to bring us into account for the things that we do. And then they start doing negative things, evil things, right? You ever notice some people, they will complain about bosses that take advantage of the of the people under them, the workers. And then when they become bosses, they do the same exact thing. The same exact thing that they was complaining about, they start to do, right? Um... And again, this is just, I'm providing insight based on the, the, what I read of the tough shirt, and I'm, I'm, I'm putting it in a language for, for some of my viewers, right? Um, but if I am brought back to my Lord, then reverently, um, for him, on the reverently, we will show the disbelievers what they have done. So yeah, so some people, they get to the point when adversity is removed from them, they start to become arrogant, and then they start to engage in ways that they kind of like, probably were complaining themselves right and they think that they will not be called to account for these things and then it says when then Beverly we will show them what they have done right um so so yeah they start to lose track of the hereafter they start to lose track and then they start to become arrogant and, and show they behind right kind of like what we like to say and then the next verse 51 saying chapter 41 51 it says and when we show favor to men he withdraws and turns away but when evil touches him, then he has recourse to long supplications. This is really, this is really like the gist of, of what I want to talk about, right? Because it's like, and when we show favor to man, he withdraws and turns away, right? When when God brings his relief, I've seen this so many times. When God grants you a favor, right? I've seen this with prison. I said this in one of my videos. A lot of people in prison, it's a hardship, it's a calamity. It says right here, but when evil touches him, then he has recourse to long supplications. People in jail be praying, they be begging, begging God. Not even just in jail, in the street. My One of my brothers, one of my bros, right, he had converted to Islam when he was in prison. When he came home, you know, he used to pray when he was in jail, you know, doing everything he was doing. He got to the street, right? Like, like Allah says, right? And when we show favor to man, he withdraws and turns away, right? So he goes from being in a calamity, praying, asking God, asking God for forgiveness and, and for good, right? To free him. And then one God, once God free him, he forgot about God. He turns away. Allah says it in the Quran and numerous verses, right? He turns away. So... Now he's not praying. He's not engaging in the things that he's supposed to engage until he got shot. He got shot. Now, remember, even when he wasn't praying, I was asking, brother, you praying? He like, oh, you know, man, it's kind of hard. You did, you know, he had all the excuses in the book until he got shot and he lived. And Allah spared him again, right? He got shot a few times and he was spared. And then... <laughs> I remember talking to him. He was like, yeah, bro, I started praying again, man. It's like every time, it's almost like every time there's a hardship or a calamity, it's the only times we tend to remember God. It's the only times we tend to remember him. And Allah says this in the Quran. This book was revealed in the 600s, in the 7th century, right? 1,400 years ago, this book was revealed. And it's talking to the nature of man, humans, right? So, a lot of times when we come home from prison, or a lot of times, let's scratch it from prison, because a lot of some some people here have not been to prison. You you notice the people that get drunk. You ever encounter a person that gets drunk and they feel sick and they feel real bad, and then they tell God, "Please God, I'm never going to drink no more," or they might just throw that around like, "I'm never going to drink no more." We hear it all the time. And then what happens? 
as soon as the hangover go away, as soon as they feel better, they turn away. They go back on what they said. It happens all the time. Some people get sick out here. And they be like, God, please, if you remove this cancer from me, if you remove this disease from me, if you remove this hurt from me, if you allow me to get this job, I will give charity. If you allow me to do this, I will do this. We hear it all the time. And then when God grants the favor to you, you turn away. You restrict your hand. You don't want to give in charity. You don't want to be kind to the people who are less fortunate. You start saying things like, I don't know what he's going to do with my money. He might be using it for drugs. Imagine if God said that about you. <laughs> of course, God knows everything. But just, just, just think about it, right? Imagine if God was like, nah, I ain't going to get you that job. Because I know, and God knows, I know once you get the money, you're not going to give in charity. Imagine if God operated like that with us. Because he knows what we're going to do. He says it in the Quran. He says, when we when we, when we we show favor to man, right? When we remove, and truly when we give him a taste of mercy, when we give him riches, when we give him good health, when we give him some of these things, he turns away. So God knows. So imagine if he was just on something like, you know what? I'm not even going to give you nothing because I already know what you're going to do. We'll be, we'll, we'll be messed up. We'll feel some type of way. So I want us to remember that. I want us to remember that when we walk past people who are hungry, right? I want us to remember the time when we didn't have a job and we was probably wondering where our next meal was going to come from. I want us to remember that. You know, when we fast the month of Ramadan and we feel the hunger pains and we feel what other people feel, right? We doing this voluntarily. But there's a lot of people who involuntarily fast because they don't know where their next meal going to come from. They don't know where their clean water going to come from. I want us to remember those things. And not just the fasting people, but the people who are not fasting. I want you to remember when there was a time where you didn't know where your next meal was going to come from. And if you never experienced that, alhamdulillah, give thanks. Give thanks to God that he never put you through that. Okay? Give thanks to God first and then your parents. That you never had to en en encounter that, right? Because there's a lot of people who are going through that, right? Um, so, yeah, that, that's basically what I wanted to cover. I just, I just wanted to talk about the nature of man. That when God gives him, when God has mercy on him, we forget that so fast. And we do that with people on an everyday basis. You heard the saying of people that bite the hand that feed them? We do that every day. We do that every day, right? And in another verse, God says that man becomes arrogant because he thinks himself to be self-sufficient. Right? He thinks that he created himself. You hear a lot of people, ignorant people, walk around here and say, we are gods. Right? We created ourselves. We came from the stars. Y'all know the rhetoric they be preaching. I'll be looking at these people like, and Allah says this in the Quran, again, 1400 years ago. He said, man thinks himself to be self-sufficient. And another verse, he says, that they seek to alter my creation, right? So this adds to man thinking that he is self-sufficient, right? Now they're trying to, they're trying to play with the clouds. Right? They're trying to create their own clouds and, and play with the weather. Right? They play with the food. They make artificial crops, GMOs, right? Um, they, they tamper with the DNA and the RNA. So so certain cattle, certain fishes, certain some of the, the things that we eat can grow faster. Right? They playing with sex, the sex of people. Right? They're telling men they could be women and women they could be men. And they're doing this younger and younger. They are tampering with his creation. And Allah said this in the Quran. Right? So because the humans think they're at this point in life where, oh, we don't really need. <laughs> we can we can create our own artificial womb. We can create our own clouds. We can create our own crops. Our crops. We don't need God. Ayadu billah. 
It's crazy. We didn't create those things. The trees and all of these things was already here before we got here. Right? The sustenance was already created by God before we got here. But because man keeps playing and tampering with science, he thinks he is self-sufficient. And all of those things that man is creating, trying to replicate the creation of God or trying to tamper with the creation of God, is all having adverse effects. Eating GMO is having adverse effects. Playing with people's organs is having adverse effects. Like playing with the weather is, is going to have adverse effects. Like we see all of these things that men keep trying to play because they're trying to be self-sufficient. It's having detrimental effects to the e not just the ecosystem, but the lives of not just ourselves, but also the planet that we are living in. Um, so I just want us to be mindful with that. I'm sorry I, I went a little too long, but I just wanted us to be mindful and be a little more thankful for the things that we have, the small things. You know, the, and I'll leave you all with this. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, richness is not how much wealth you accumulate. He said, richness is being content with what you have. Okay? It takes a lot for man to be content because they always want more. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me, give me, give me. Right? Jay-Z said this in a song one time. He said, all, all ninjas really know how to do is say is give me. Give me some coochie. Give me some brain. Give me a number. Give me a name. Blah, blah, blah. But you get the gist. That's we Give me, give me, give me. We always want something. Learn how to start appreciating what you have, man. Learn how to say thank you more. And in, in, in some of your prayers for God, sometimes you, you, sometimes you don't got to ask for something. Sometimes you can just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be thankful. Okay? It's okay to ask, but be thankful sometimes. Be thankful, man. And I'll repeat the hadith one more time. Richness is not how much wealth you accumulate. Richness is being content with what you have. Okay? Now let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. I hope this, this message um, is beneficial to some of the people out there. Um, and I hope some of the people take heed. Y'all stay blessed. Y'all have a good one. Peace.